In lesson 5.7, what we're going to do is we're going to write zeros in the dividend when we're dividing. And we're going to do that because we don't want our answer to have a remainder. We want our answer to be in decimal form. For example, if Sarah has 78 ounces of rice, and Sarah wants to divide those ounces of rice into 12 bags, if there happens to be rice left over, we're not going to uh, write that answer as a remainder. We're going to take that rice and we're going to divide it up uh, amongst each of the bags. So if we were taking 78 ounces and dividing it into 12 bags, well, we know if we took 78 and we divided it by 12, we know that we can put six ounces of rice in each bag, six full ounces of rice in each bag, because that would give us 72, and we would have six ounces left over. Now, since we want to take this rice that's left over and divide it into the 12 bags, uh, what we could do is we could take that remainder and create a decimal. And we create a decimal by placing a decimal after the 78 and adding a zero because now that that decimal is added after the 78 we haven't changed the value of the 78 and now that we've added that zero we can now bring down that zero next to the six and regroup and create 60 tenths after this step when we know when we divide after we bring down we know we uh, can divide again and we have 60 of these tenths and we divide them among the 12 groups and we'd be able to put 5 tenths in each one of those groups. Therefore in each of these bags will be 6 and 5 tenths ounces. So whenever you're dividing and you want your decimal to become a remainder, if it's a whole number, we add our decimal, we add our zero, and we could bring down and continue to divide. Another example. So if we have a cyclist that rode his bike 45 and eight tenths miles in four hours. If we wanted to ter de to determine how fast they rode that bike each hour, we would take that forty-five and eight tenths and divide it by four. We would divide forty-five and eight tenths divided by four, as we normally would. and we would be left with a remainder of 2. Now, we're not going to say that the cyclist rode 11 and 4 tenths remainder 2 miles per hour. What we'll do is we're going to change that remainder and use it to create a decimal. Now since the decimal is already here, all we would need to do is add a zero to this answer considering that zero will not change the value of 45 and 8 tenths. 45 and 8 tenths and 45 and 80 hundredths is the exact same amount. Now that that zero is there, however, I could bring that zero down and I have 20 divided by 4. 20 hundredths now that are divided by 4, the 4 groups, the 4 hours, I would get 5, I multiply, and I would have no remainder. Therefore, my answer would be 11 and 45 hundredths miles per hour. One last example. Let's say we had 25 
and 5 tenths ounces of trail mix that we were dividing equally into six bags. We would divide as we normally would. Since the decimal's there, we bring that decimal up and we divide. We multiply, we subtract, we check, we bring down, and we will be left with a remainder of three. Now, since we are distributing the trail mix into six bags, we don't want a remainder. This three ounces that are left over we want to create that as a decimal, therefore, we'll add a zero and we'll bring down that zero. The reason we're not adding a decimal here is because there's already a decimal in the dividend. Now that we're able to bring down that, that, that zero, we divide 30 hundredths divided by that six, which will then be five. We won't have any remainder. And in each bag, there will be four and 25 hundredths ounces of that trail mix. And that's how we could write zeros in the dividend to divide when we want our quotient in decimal form.